All right, so, so far we've talked about pump curves where you are provided the pump curves by the manufacturer. However, I want to talk to you about the other curves that the suppliers, the pump suppliers expected to provide you as well. And I want to talk about the four performance curves that the pump supplier should be providing you. A, they should be providing you pump curves, which is basically pressure or head that the pump delivers versus the flow rate of the pump that it will deliver at. And the pump curves could, they could provide you for different impeller speeds or different diameters. And we'll see what that means in a second. The pump supplier should also provide you efficiency curves of the pump, and they should provide you with a net positive um, suction head requirement curve. We're going to talk about NPSR, NPSH um, in this chapter in another video, and they should also provide you with power consumption curves, which will help you select the motor. So if we look at what essentially the curves look like, so for a constant diameter, you can have multiple head curves depending on what speed the impellers will rotate at. And that is something that you could decide if you have a um, VFD, which is a variable frequency drive installed on at your pump. So you could see we've discussed that the pump curve essentially looks like this for a centrifugal pump. And if you increase the RPM, which is the rotation of the impeller, you could basically shift the curve upwards so you could generate more flow rate and more head. And the efficiency curves are these dotted lines. And essentially, the point of having these efficiency curves is that because you want to operate as close as possible to the highest efficiency possible of the pump. And so the operating point of your pump, you would rather have an operating point of the pump that's as close as possible to a high efficiency or the best uh, operating point. And I will discuss and I'll tell you what best operating point means in a second. They will also provide you with the NPSHR curves, which is the net positive suction head required curves. And as you could see, the NPSHR curve changes depending on what speed you're operating at. So as you increase the speed of the impeller, such that you have more head and more flow rate in your system, the NPSHR, which is the NPSH curve, it also shifts upwards as a result. And it goes without saying, if you are increasing the speed of the pump, then you have you need more power to do so. And so the pump curves that the supplier should be providing you as well is, will increase at a higher RPM. Now, if we look at the graph on the right hand side, it's essentially the same performance curves, but for different impeller diameters. And let's look at them together. So if you increase the impeller diameter, what you're, what's happening is now you're providing more centrifugal force to the fluid. And so as a result of that, you will generate more head and flow rate. And if we look at the NPSHR curves, if we look at the NPSHR curves, now this trend is that the bigger the impeller is, the less NPS, NPSH are required for the pump. And however, the bigger the impeller, the more force you'll be providing the fluid, then the more power the pump will require of um, this particular operation. So what happens is you could either change the diameter of your impeller so that you get a specific pump curve that you're looking for, or if you have a VFD, you could change the speed of the impeller rotation so that shifts the pump curve. And essentially, these are tactics that you could use so that you could change the performance curve of a pump. And essentially, when you do that, you want to do that so that you operate closer to a higher efficiency point so that the pump lives longer, essentially.
I want to go through some definitions with you because I've used best operating point and I haven't defined that. And there are some other terminologies that, terminologies that are important for you to know. So the best efficiency point is basically the flow rate and head at which the pump efficiency is maximum at a given impeller speed or diameter. So if we're looking at this curve, the best efficiency point would be operating closer to the 85% efficiency region. The preferred operating region is a range of flow rates to either side of the best efficiency point within which the hydraulic efficiency and the oper operational reliability of the pump are not substantially degraded. And the preferred operating region can be anywhere from 90% to 110% of the best efficiency point and the flow to be between 70 to 120% of the best efficiency point flow. So if you look at this graph again, if you can't operate around this region, then the preferred operating range would be somewhere between here and here. So you have, you have a range where when you operate at, you're still in the preferred operating region. The allowable operating region is the flow rate range in which the pump may be allowed to operate uh, as limited by cavitation, heating, vibration, or noise, and other similar criteria. It's a flow range at which the pump can be run within acceptable service life determined by the supplier. So this is a flow rate that the pump supplier will be providing you and he might say never ever ever run the pump below maybe half a gallon per minute because if you do that then you are essentially damaging your pump um, and he will give you like a lower end and then a higher end as well so maybe you never ever want to increase beyond a particular flow rate because then you're also susceptible to damaging the pump and this is this number is provided to you by the supplier based on testings that they have done. The shutoff head is a condition of zero, zero flow rate where no liquid is flowing through the pump, but the pump is primed and running. And so operating at this point for more than a few seconds can cause serious mechanical issues. So let's imagine that the pump is turned on, but there's a valve that's closed at the discharge of the pump. Essentially what you're running at, you're running at um, maximum head, which is close to the very top left end of the pump curve. And what's happening is that you're having the impellers running very quickly, but the fluid is being pushed to the piping, but the piping is closed. And so what's happening is you're essentially having the impellers running on themselves and the liquid would vaporize. And so you'd have bubbles forming and that you could have the impellers chipped off as a result of the bubbles forming. And so you would have serious damage to your pump from operating at, a shut, at the shutoff head. Pump runout is the point at which the flow is at maximum. Operating at this flow can cause cavitation, vibration, and some pumps overloading of the driver. So as opposed to the shutoff head, the pump runout is when you run very close to this dipping point of the pump. And this is also beyond the allowable operating range of the pump. And you should not be running at that point because you can cause serious damages to your pump. So now that you know the four curves that the pump supplier should be providing you with and some of the basic definitions, let's see an example of real performance curves on a uh, pump that I purchased and I was working.